Well, for that, we need to do an experiment. So, come, let's do it inside a laboratory. Okay, so here we are. First of all, you need to take a piece of the fleshy leaves of the onion bulb and with the help of a pair of forceps, try to peel off the epidermis from the inner surface or the concave surface of this peel and then immediately transfer it into a wash glass containing water to avoid folding and drying of the peel. Further, take a glass slide and put a drop of water in the center. Well, you know what? You will need a paintbrush to transfer the peel from the watch glass to the glass light. Well, make sure that the peel is flat and not folded. Okay. And now we will need a drop of saffron in solution for staining the peel so that the cells of the onion could be visible under the microscope. Well, after that, you need to put the cover slip at a 45 degree angle over this glass slide before viewing it under the microscope. Well, make sure that you do the step really carefully for avoiding the formation of air bubbles. And now finally, you can put this glass slide under the microscope and view it. Well, make sure that you first view it under lower magnification power and then later under higher magnification power. Okay? Let me peep through this. Oh, I see so many small structures arranged together here. Well, meet them. They are cells. They are the basic unit of all living organisms. Well, now if I ask you this question, that is, what are living organisms made up of? You might already know the answer, right? Yes, living organisms are made up of cells. And remember that this is how the onion cells look under the microscope. Interesting, right? Oh, I have a doubt. What if I take a bigger onion and a small onion? What do you think? Does the bigger onion contain bigger cells? Well, if that's what you think, then it's absolutely wrong. Because the size of the cells will be the same, but the number of cells will be more in the bigger onion, which makes it bigger in size. Okay.